In this video, we will use the compound interest formula to find the principal, or the amount invested, to get a desired result. As we do, we will evaluate what we can first in the equation, and then solve the resulting equation. You may recall that the formula for compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. We want to know how much money, that's our principal, would have to be invested at 6%. This is our rate, which is always written as a decimal, 0 0.06. It is compounded weekly, meaning the number of compounds in a year is 52. At the end, we want the final amount to be $1,500. Plugging this into our formula, we get 1,500 for the A, equals some unknown principle, times 1 plus the rate, as a decimal, 0 0.06, over the number of compounds, 52, to the NT, or 52, times the 15 years, which is our time. Again, being careful how you plug this in the calculator, I'm going to evaluate the exponent and the parentheses separately first. 1,500 equals P, times, using several decimals for accuracy, 1.00115385 to the 780th power. Our calculator can now actually evaluate that to get 1,500 equals 2.458335 times P, again using several decimals for accuracy, and we can quickly solve by dividing by that 2.458335 on both sides. When we do, we find out P, the principal investment we need to have $1,500, is simply $610.17. Let's take a look at another example where we seek to find the principal, or starting, investment. Again, the formula for compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. We want to know what principal, or P, will amount to $800 as our final amount. It's going to be invested for 10 years, which is our time, at 12%. That rate, as a decimal, is 0.12. This one is compounded semi-annually, or twice per year. Plugging this into our formula, A is 800, equals the principal we're looking for, times 1 plus our rate, 0.12, over the number of compounds, 2, to the NT, or 2 times 10. Again, depending on your calculator, you'll need to be careful how you enter this in. I'm going to do the exponent in the parentheses in a separate step. 800 equals P times 1.06 to the 20th power. I can now evaluate what I can, the 1.06 to the 20th power. This gives me 800 equals 3.207135P. Again, with exponential functions, it's important to use several decimals to ensure accuracy. When we divide by 3.2071355 on both sides, we end up getting our P alone. The investment we need to have $800 after 10 years is merely $249.44. To solve for P in our formula, we simply evaluate everything we can, being careful with our calculators, and then solve for P like we have any other equation.